Hi guys, so I'm currently out in the beautiful French Alps and given that red wine is one of the national passions of France, I thought I would take this opportunity to talk about one of the most common questions we receive via our social media platforms, which is, is red wine good for you? Okay, what's the evidence? There's so much conflicting evidence. It's good for you, it's bad for you. It helps you live longer, it doesn't help you live longer. It does this, it does that. But what's the actual state of evidence? Okay, and it's a really good question because there is such conflicting data around the validity of the research around whether red wine is good for us or whether it's not. And one of the really big challenges in trying to understand that question is that, you know, we're humans, we're not lab rats, okay? We can't standardize humans, we can't put us in a lab where everything is the same, in the same way you can do for studies using rats or mice, okay? So if you've got one community of people having lots of red wine and another not having red wine, and one lives longer and one doesn't, is it the red wine or is it their climate or is it their diet or is it their family status or is it their job? or is it their exercise quota? It's impossible to work out what's responsible for what, okay? <clears throat> Until now, okay? Because a genius, genius study, a fantastically constructed study, actually one of the cleverest studies I've seen in a long time has recently been published. And what they tried to do was ultimately standardize humans, trying to find human communities that would replicate the controlled nature of studies using lab rats. And what did they decide upon? Using cloistered nuns. Absolutely genius, okay? Cloistered nuns living in a monastery whose routine, whose work hours, whose diet, whose social status, whose activity, everything is relatively homogenized, okay? They haven't got lots of external variables such as commutes, mortgage worries, school runs, you know, higher income, lower income. You know, their life is as standardized as you can get. Okay, so they're as close to a laboratory controlled study as you could possibly get. But crucially, these nuns weren't drinking red wine, okay, before they entered the study. So it allowed the researchers to identify in a very unique way what actually happens at the genetic level when people start drinking red, uh, red wine relative to disease prevention and aging. And what they did was took a, a panel of some of the most important genes, uh, such as sirtuin 1, uh, P53, um, superoxide disputase and antioxidant gene that are you know, the most predictive, the most powerful genes relevant to longevity and disease prevention. So they, they, they measured those before the study and then they gave the nuns 200 mils of wine to drink with their evening meal. Okay, 200 mils of a really good quality wine to drink every day with their evening meal for 14 days. At the end of the 14 days, they then remeasured the same markers. And what did they find? They found profound improvements, okay? They found that these, these particularly these two genes, sirtuin one and P53, these are often called the guardian of the genome. These are genes that are responsible for cancer prevention, heart disease prevention. We know that their activity is linked to longer and healthier lifespans. The, the research showed that um, these nuns were producing much more um, superoxide dismutase, which is an antioxidant that has a profound impact upon preventing free radical damage, which is a, a, a precursor to accelerated aging and disease. And as far as I'm concerned, that study really puts to rest any serious question marks around the evidence of whether red wine is good for us because that community it was tested on was so standardized their diet their exercise their routine their sleep everything was the same and crucially there's a couple of takeaways we can take from that study yes red wine was you know clinically significant within those areas but the other thing is moderation Okay, it was 200 mils once a day. That's a relatively small volume and it was always consumed with food. And that seems to be significant because in many ways that neutralizes the actual alcohol impact, but still maintains and preserves the health boosting impacts. So I think that study, which is so clever and so unique, really puts rest to the question marks, the uncertainty around whether red wine is good for us or not. It shows that at the genetic level, 
red wine contains compounds and constituent parts that are now clinically proven um, to, to promote healthier aging and to promote the genes that are known to sub, uh, suppress some of the leading causes of death in our, in our, in our culture, you know, particularly cancer and heart disease. Okay, so the big takeaway is one, red wine does appear to be very, very good for us. Yes, it does appear to be linked to longevity, but in moderation, in, in, in uh, eaten with food and using good quality wine. Okay, I hope that helps. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. To stay up to date with these kinds of videos, all things health, promotion, disease prevention, longevity, Ayurveda, herbal medicine, please subscribe to the channel and you'll get updated when new videos are released. And I will see you all soon.